Greetings to all my fellow SharePoint enthusiasts. Tom Robbins here with ASPE. And this week, uh, my video blog post is all about how to use SharePoint wikis and wiki libraries to create uh, fantastic knowledge bases uh, that your teams can use. Okay, so if you, uh, if you saw my blog post from last week uh, titled How to Use Wiki Libraries, I talked about wiki libraries. It's another of the great features of SharePoint 2013. They're one of my most favorite, but they're also very underused um, collaboration features. Uh, they provide a lot of power for teams to really be able to engage with one another to create these central repositories and knowledge bases. Uh, I mean, a wiki library allows a team to implement, implement a true many-to-many -many collaboration experience. Uh, very similar to Wikipedia, it's a library. Uh, in SharePoint and it's made up of, of web pages and together all of those web pages um, can create some central knowledge base or central repository so it's great to use for training manuals or product information or policies and procedures anything where we could put a piece of content on every page and elaborate each page so wh what I'll do in this uh, in this video blog is let's say for example uh, and I've got a screenshot here from my last week, uh, from my last week's blog post. Uh, let's say we wanted to build an information technology procedures knowledge base, and basically there'd be a home page or a landing page, uh, and from there we could click on each of the different uh, procedures in the IT department that we want to learn about. So not only you know could we learn about uh, backups and disaster recovery, we could also contribute to the content on these pages if it was set up that way. So basically, I'm just going to walk through the steps of showing you how to create a wiki library, um, how to create pages in the library, how to add these uh, these these holders, placeholders, uh, there, we'll call them placeholders, and, and also how to create links to other pages. So we'll get started. Uh, by just picking the site we, where we want the uh, library to be be created and it's an app so we'll go ahead and just add an app and because I'm lazy I'll just search for the app so we'll search for the wiki library we'll give it a name and I'll call this my IT procedures KB for knowledge base now a little different than a normal library when you open this IT procedures wiki library instead of it displaying the actual documents in the library it displays the home page or the page uh, the the uh, the web page in the library designated as the home page so it actually displays the home page now if you want to see the contents of the wiki library if you go to the page tab there's a link here called view all pages and from here now we actually see it as a library so you'll see that we have an HTML document this is the home page there's an HTML document how to use this library. So if we click on the home page, that'll actually take us to the page. We can create as many pages as we like, and it's just like creating a document in a document library, just new wiki page, and you'd give it a name. So I'll just do a demo page. Uh, so this is a new page. Just call it new page and click create. And SharePoint immediately puts us in edit mode for this new page. Okay, so now we can go ahead and, and place, you know, whatever content we want on this page. Okay, we'll talk more about that in just a moment. So place whatever content you want here. Save the page. And then we'll just go back to the library again. Click on the page tab, view all pages, to look at all of the pages in the library. So there's that new page and then the home page. So I'm just going to edit the home page because it's easier to go ahead and get started that way. And I'll just show you what my goal is again. My goal is just to have a page here with some links on it that take us to different pages in the wiki library. Each one of these pages talks about each one of these IT procedures. So I'll just go ahead and take advantage of uh, some of the formatting we already have. I'll just call this my IT procedures knowledge base. And we can change this to say here are, here are some links to common IT procedures and these are maintained by the IT team okay and then we can you know clean up the rest of it if we like so I guess what I'd like to go ahead and start doing is maybe 
uh, put some placeholders to some pages that I'd like to have created in this in this knowledge base. Now the pages may already exist, uh, but if they don't, I can put placeholders for them. So one of the really neat features of the wiki pages are uh, these left and right brackets. So if I just type the left the the two left brackets. Notice a menu will pop up, and this is sort of a quick menu to all of the pages that already exist in this site. So I could pick any of these pages, and basically this will create a link to those pages. So if I use the two right brackets to complete the link, I've got a link here to the home page. Of course, this is the page that I'm on, so it'll actually sort of link you right back to where you are. Or I could link to that new page, or I could link to the page how to use this library. But if I actually type in the name of a page that does not exist yet, like a backup page, use my two right brackets, two left brackets, maybe a page for disaster recovery procedure, two right brackets, maybe a page for account management, and then maybe a page for audit, and then two right brackets. And then maybe down here at the bottom, you want to always put a link back to the home page. So you can just pick that from the list and use your two right brackets. Now we could do a lot more with this page. I mean, it's, it's true rich text HTML, so you can do formatting, insert pictures, insert tables, insert video, uh, you know, change the text layout of the page to, to represent how, um, how you want it to appear for your team. But for now, we won't dive into those basics. We'll just just suffice to know that that you can you know really format the page to look any way you like okay and I'm just gonna delete that first home link because that doesn't make sense all right let's just save the page and see what we get here so notice what we've got are these four links and the fifth link back to the home page the the dashed underline under the 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 the, the, um, the titles tell me that that's a page that does not exist yet so now someone could come along, maybe the backup specialist, they could come along and, and say, hey, I want to create a backup page. They could just click on that link. We'll have SharePoint create it. So this is a really cool feature. SharePoint will dynamically create the page for you. And then this is the page all about backups. Okay, so you put all your information about backups, all your procedures, whatever you want. And then at the bottom, you want to remember to give links to other things. Okay, so we can start using our left and right bracket. So if I use the left bracket, notice these are the pages that already exist, but maybe I want to give a link to that page that doesn't exist yet. So the disaster recovery page. I can go ahead and put in those placeholders, and then when the pages get created, the links will be live. Now you got to make sure to spell it correctly. So you may not have these links in the beginning, but and then a link back to the home page and then save your page. And just to be a little consistent, let's change what the headings look like. So that that was how easy it was to create a page about backups. So here we are now on the backup page. Notice there's a link back to the home page. Notice here on the home page, now the backup page no longer has a dashed underline because that page exists now. So we'll go ahead and do one more page. How about the audit page? So I come along here, I click on the link. SharePoint says the page doesn't exist yet, so we'll go ahead and create the page. And this is the page all about audit procedures. And of course we can change the formatting. So all of the information about audit, you just have to pretend that you know what I'm, uh, that, that there's real live information there. And then let's make sure we put links. Now that the backup page exists, we can simply use our left two brackets, pick the backup page, give a placeholder to the disaster recovery page. Whoops, make sure you spell it right or it won't work. A link to the account management page and then of course a link always back to the home page okay so it was that easy to create a page and link so now if we go back to the home page you'll notice we have a link to the backup page from the backup page we can link to the audit page from the audit page we can link back home 
So it's like Wikipedia on the internet. We've created an interactive experience for our teams. And based on the permissions in the library, now remember this is still just a library. If we go to the page tab and look at, uh, click on view all pages, you notice these are all just pages in a library. So you can use all of the features of SharePoint libraries like permissions and content management and approval and version control and metadata for you to manage these libraries. And if you, you know, based on the types of permissions your team has, you can determine who has access to these pages. I mean, you may let everyone on your team have read write access so that we can all contribute to the content. Or there may just be a subset of people that contribute to the content. Okay, so that's how quick and easy it is to use a SharePoint Wiki library. I hope this information has been useful for you. Uh, look forward to next week's blog post where I'll talk about the SharePoint 2013 newsfeed.